almost at the end of the first day, first day of programming at the Rise World Summit 24. We had our launch yesterday, and I hope many of you were there for the release of the Rise Values and the Cold Toolkit. If not, I would encourage you to, of course, catch up with that uh, video. Right now, we are here for an absolutely incredible first time ever session to be held. Not just at the Rise World Summit, but I would dare to say anywhere in terms of a conversation in public. We are going to be talking about the Indian tri services and women officers def defending our nation from the Air Force, Navy, and the Army. An absolute wow. moment of pride and honor for us to have them with us. And to lead this conversation, we have none other than Captain Swati Sharma. I'm just going to say a few words because it just swells my heart with pride to have say that Captain Swati Sharma is also a friend and an army veteran commissioned in the Indian Army Ordnance Corps in March 2006. <clears throat> After completing her services, she joined as the first female officer of the Rajasthan Home Guard Department and is presently serving as commander. She was, com she was awarded the DTCB commendation and additionally has been extremely progressive in her personal life as well, something that ties both of us together. Recently, in 2021, she was awarded the prestigious British Evening Scholarship and she completed her Master's in Risk, Disaster and Resilience at the University of College London. Captain Swati Sharma, thank you. You and the ladies that we are going to listen to make us so proud not just because they are ladies, but I think because they're doing what we need to defend our nation. We need to inspire our children and we need to protect our future. And with that, may I request you to please start and take this ahead. Thank you. A very good evening to all the viewers and participants. First of all, I would like to thank Rice Summit 2024 and especially Karon for giving us this opportunity. She has already spoken about me, <laughs> nothing left. But uh, now, first of all, what she has already told us that, uh, yes, I proudly state that this is, you are going to witness the Indian Tri Services Women Officers coming together on the same platform for the very first time. And here you will explore how a young girl, she evolved as a military leader and not just conquered the land, but air and the waters. So we will take you through their life journeys, the challenges they faced, and how they overcame them to bounce back stronger and harder. But before that, let me take you to on, on a visual tour to witness who are we talking about. So please have a look on a short video. I'll just present my screen. So now, without taking any further time, let's welcome on board 
the magnificent veteran women officers from tri services indian army indian air force and indian navy we are proud to have the pioneers who motivated the future generations including me to join the forces which were considered to be a male dominated profession so let me call for captain anjana the first women officer commissioned in the indian army she served for 10 years in the army service corps squadron leader deepa nelwal from the first batch of women officers in the air force from the education branch she was awarded air force commanding in chief medal during commissioning days lieutenant nishu who joined the first batch of women officers in the indian navy in the logistic cadre she was awarded the best lady cadet by then defense minister she was awarded the best cadet at naval academy and she is recipient of commander in chief commendations not once but twice so we all have the officers over here uh, so now let's hear from them let us know ma'am what motivated you to join the defense forces major anjana okay good evening everyone well to start with uh, i would just want to say about two major motivating factors uh, first was definitely the grace of uniform i was you know my father was in the air force and uh, whenever i would see him in uniform i would uh, i mean just admire him in his uniform and i still remember i would often ask him a question as to why women are not there in the armed forces so he used to tell me that if indira gandhi can be the prime minister of our country you never know a day come when the doors are open for girls to join the armed forces and i would just laugh at it second thing was that right from my childhood days i was always very keen to explore innovative projects ideas and would love to break the stereotypes i mean i would always be on a lookout for the uh, news or some kind of articles about women who were first in their fields accomplished women i still remember dr hindu ja the first gynecologist who uh, delivered the first test tube baby so this was another thing that i was always keen for and my dream came true when i in in the year 1992 i had just finished my masters and i saw this advertisement that army has opened doors for the girls so uh, more so i was very fortunate that there were uh, just four seats for asc and the qualification that was required was msc microbiology that was exactly the um, uh, qualification that i had so without thinking i thought this is the best opportunity for me to explore a male dominated domain which was yet to be ventured by ladies and so i went straight away for the ssb got commission in the first batch and not only that i was also the recipient of gold medal and my number started with ws00001 so that's it i want to say thank you so no looking back attitude made you the first women of in the indian army now next i would like to hear from squadron leader deepa hi good evening everyone am i audible swati yes ma'am you are okay great thank you so much so um i i was part of the first batch of women officers for the indian air force and indian air force also happened to be the first services to advertise uh, for women officers so imagine um for many many years when we were in school and college we all participated in various debates debates about why women are not allowed uh, to be part of the defense services so for a decade we had been debating about it and suddenly one day after my masters i wake up and uh, i see an advertisement in the newspaper where uh, indian air force is asking for uh, uh, women officers so it was uh, i think one of the biggest dreams come true and it was the biggest challenge for for any young girl at that point of time and a greatest opportunity to serve the nation by joining the defense forces so um, you know was very excited applied for it and was fortunate enough to join and one of my batchmates uh, uh, wing commander anupama joshi is also here so it was a great great opportunity for all of us yeah <laughs> thank you thank you ma'am you all are an inspiration for us coming to lieutenant nishu Hi everyone. My first twenty years, I lived in Punjab, and where my family's DNA was discipline. So I had nobody in the forces that time or in the police. 
but my role model was Kiran Bedi, who was the first woman IPS officer. Looking at her, the kind of work she did in Punjab, uniform and serving the nation unconditionally became passion for my life. So that's how I got trained by my family. I was lucky for my mental resilience, physical training. And unfortunately, I lost my dad at very early stage of life. I could not become IPS officer, but I lived with that dream. They say when you dream something very hard, work towards it. And see, in 92, when I was doing my master's in civil engineering, Navy advertised, first time to take women officers. That's how I went, applied, got myself trained in Kannur Deol Academy and got commissioned on 13 July 1992 as a part of the first batch of lady officers in logistics cargo. So basically, Kiran Bedi was my motivation. Thank you. Yes, okay. I basically, Dr. Kiran Bedi was a real motivation for many. And so uh, you, all of us, uh, so however, you people are just trying to make history. So it was a fascinating experience to hear from the veterans who became the guiding light for the future generations. But we all know that new paths are never easy to cross and are full of ups and downs. So let's hear about those challenges that came across in the path of these women during the induction and the training period. To begin with, I would like to invite Lieutenant Colonel Ankita, who is from the third batch of women officers. She got commissioned as an Army Ordnance Corps officer and served for 14 years. Lieutenant Colonel Ankita. A very good evening to all of you. Thank you, Swati, for uh, giving me this opportunity to speak on this elite platform. So uh, the challenges that I faced uh, during my OTA days was that I had literally fooled my parents to allow me to fill up the form for SSB. I had literally fooled them. And it was basically because my parents had uh, already fixed up my marriage with a person of their choice that it was a dowryless marriage just because I couldn't qualify the medical entrance test. So I had to be given away in the marriage, that to in a dowryless marriage without taking any opinion of mine. I literally fooled my parents and then once I landed at OTA, now this became a double challenge for me that I cannot go back home without becoming an officer. So I had to do double mehnat for everything. So my blood, my cuts, my bruises, I could not tell it to my parents where other cadets used to write letters to their parents talking about their physical pain because definitely the training is very tough and my body was not used to that physical agility because I was not subjected to any kind of uh, physical thing during my college days and it became very difficult for me to align my body with those difficult days in the OTA training but I kept quiet. I kept on enduring both the mental and the physical pain all by myself without telling to my family members because had I told them, they would have asked me to come back immediately. And I stood by whatever training I could do because I had to become an officer. I had to clear all the tests and I had to be a winner by becoming an officer. That's how I faced my challenges in the OTA. Thank you. So we just heard the army side. Now let's move to Wing Commander Anupama from the first batch of women officers in the Air Force. Wing Commander Anupama, could you please throw some light on the challenges that you faced during the initial days? Uh, thank you, Swati. Hello, colleagues, um, my dear veterans. So the challenges what we faced, so it was not very personal to myself per se, as you say that we were from the first batch. The challenges were there for the entire lot. We were 12 of us who were inducted. And I think the first challenge which we fe felt um, collectively was of acceptance. Because when we joined the academy, uh, when we entered the academy, the academy had not seen women. So there was a confusion about how, how they should treat us, right? Uh, whether they should be, you know, we should be cadets. At that time, we were supposed to be cadets, whether we should be cadets. They were very confused about um, how, whether they should respect us, even on the drill um, parade, um, even the JTOs, etc. would, you know, um, be very hesitant to give us um, punishment initially, I felt. So I feel the fact of acceptance was something which was very lurking on our head that why are we not being treated equal? 
like the rest of the men that was kind of very very daunting so it was not personal to me or to the rest of the person we went through our own challenges uh, we went through our own physical issues some people were tough some were not mm, uh, but uh, when we were inducted the air force by then had not even decided that um, you know what our uniform is going to be so i remember um, distinctively that we were all called huddled up into a room and we were asked that how they should decide on the women um, uniform uh, and i think the army was going to come next or the navy i'm not too sure but there was a whole um, uh, you know whole series of people from the defense had come up to speak to us that how they should decide on our uniform and we were very insistent that the uniform should be same as what men were so they said okay the uniform is going to be same what about um, uh, camping what about the mufti are you going to wear salwar kameez when you're going to go for your outing or it is going to be the trouser and shirt like men so you know it may sound very trivial at this moment but it it can be very uh, you know uh, challenging at that point of time that uh somehow you're thrown into you come to a service you have some kind of um, imaginations about military like um uh, one of the colleagues said that they the uniform was very attractive and the very fact that we were being challenged whether we are going to be wearing the uniform or not was you know uh, was stressful at that point of time but um, uh, i think the goodness dawned on them and we got the uh, it took them over a month to decide there was the other challenge was about um, you know the curriculum so things were not very well decided and defined at that point of time that um, we go through the same drill we go through the same jungle camp we go through the same cross country um, so every single day was a new beginning every day single day was a new challenge every single day we had to like put our foot down to you know, fight for our equality i think that was the biggest challenge which we collectively felt at that point of time Thank you, ma'am. It is surely an eye opener for all of us. Uh, now we have Commander Ruby again from the first batch of women officers from the JAG branch in Indian Navy. She was the first lady officer to lead the Republic Day Parade in 1993. Commander Ruby. Good evening, everyone. Um, regarding the challenges during the training period, uh, when it comes to breaking the glass ceiling for women. there is not only you know the mental or the physical challenges but the biggest challenge is about changing the mindset of the society and we from the first batch of the naval women officers had to face all three in 1992 uh, i come from a pure you know fauji family i am a fourth generation and i would like to illustrate briefly what were the prevailing gender norms then i was brought up in an era when you know where my mother and other officers wives were always called ma'am with doors open for them and chairs pulled out for them whenever they sat etc etc in fact even till date my 89 year old father will stand up as a matter of courtesy when a lady enters the room so women at that time were considered the fairer sex very delicate and in need of protection so into this mindset walked in the first batch equal to men in all respects it was a matter of not only great curiosity but indeed concern if we could fulfill all the mental and physical challenges that were thrown at us during the training and i am very proud to say that all of us without exception rose to every challenge mentally or physically and proved to the armed forces that we were equally as capable as men notwithstanding the stress fractures um, i would say blistered feet in drill boots etc etc which are par for the course in fauji training thank you ma'am may i request the uh, uh, participants who is not speaker can you please mute the mics some background uh, just unmute only one who is going to speak thank you uh it may look like things from the past when we heard such things from the veterans as we all know that we have come a long way it has been like three decades from the initial induction of women officers in the indian armed forces but it is just because of these officers who walked through the harder path by facing all these challenges so courageously so gracefully that changed the history for women in the defense forces 
So we are thankful to, uh, to them. I'm sure that their journeys are fascinating and they'll be inspiring us always. Life, it comes in different shades. If we face challenges, we even learned the life lessons, sometimes in a harder way and sometimes in a funny way. So now we would like to hear about some interesting incidences, experiences from your training days or the past uh, post commissioning days. I would like to ask Captain Anubha to please share some interesting experiences, ma'am, from your training uh, army. Thank you so much, Swati, for inviting me to this uh, platform. And uh, well, the moment you say that, you know, interesting incident from training or commissioning time, well, I'm sure everybody would agree that there were plenty because we were, you know, uh, open or we were introduced to a life which was totally new to us. But and but I would like to say here that all the incidents may be funny, maybe, you know, little sad, but they all gave us life lessons. One incident which I would like to narrate here is that uh, uh, once most of us uh, earned our, uh, you know, um, uh, out passes that used to be after you pass your drill test, you were allowed to go out on an out pass. So uh, that was the time uh, we were told that, OK, this is the time when, when most of you have earned your out passes. So get ready tomorrow, 1030, come and get it signed and you all can go out. So we were very excited. We next day morning, we got up a little early, got ready and all that, though we just had muftis, all same, you know, a uniform kind of a thing. But then we got ready and 1030 sharp, we were down to get our outpass assigned. So there comes our DS and he says that all of you are excited. We said, yes, sir, we are excited to go out. Uh, so he said, OK, before you all go out, let's uh, move to the uh, football court. So he took us to the football court and we were very curious that why we are, you know, taken there. But nonetheless, we were so spirited that time. We thought, good, there might be something. He might tell us that bring that, go here, go there and all that. Once we went there, it started drizzling a little bit. So he said, how about playing football before you all can go out? So he said, how, what a strange, you know, order. But then we were so excited. I said, TK, maybe another 10 minutes we'll play football and then he'll tell us to go. We tried our luck, whatever, howsoever we knew. We didn't realize how that game of match of football turned into, you know, rolling, crawling, and all those lifting each other, running pillar to post, and then challenges that, okay, if you can make it in one minute, you'll be allowed to go on out pass. So this carried on for good about two hours and we all were so exhausted and our, you know, entire muftis were into mud and slush and everything we were like you know our faces so what the hell what is happening here we were so excited to go out so then we were told fallen lcs we all you know were all in attention then we were told this was your out pass now you all can go change take shower and rest for the day what the hell we thought we were going out but nonetheless when we sit back and realize there was a life lesson that always have a plan B and always have, you know, uh, whatever time you get, you enjoy and you live life as it comes. Nothing to regret. And I, today we still sit and remember that what a lovely chat, what session we had that day, what camaraderie we developed that day. So there are plenty of such incidents. This was one I wanted to quote here. Thank you, ma'am. As agreed, the military taught us when life gives you lemon, make laminate. So we did that. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Uh, now, moving forward to uh, Wing Commander Krati, 2009 commissioned Indian Air Force officer who was part of a camel expedition in the year 2017 along with border security forces. We would like to know more about this, Krati. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, we all should agree being in Indian Air Force or being in defense is everyday experience worth mentioning. However, one such experience I would like to share on this portal. Indian Air Force gave me the opportunity to participate in one of the camel expedition uh, in collaboration with the BSF. And it started from Vardmir, Rajasthan and we were uh, 
नाइन एफ ओस ऑफिसर्स एंड अलॉन्ग विद इलेवन सीमा प्रहरी वेमेन सीमा प्रहरी ऑफ बी एस एफ सो इट स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम वार्ड में राजस्थान एंड एंडेड ऑन अटारी बॉर्डर पंजाब सो इट गेव एस ऑल द ऑपरचुनिटी टू विजिट ईच एंड एवरी नुक एंड कॉर्नर ऑफ आर वेस्टर्न बॉर्डर फॉर अबाउट अप्रोक्सीमेटली फोर्टीन हंड्रेड किलोमीटर्स सो द एम ऑफ दिस एक्सपीडिशन वॉज द नोबल नोबल कॉज ऑफ सेव द गर्ल चाइल्ड बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ इट टू कस टू मंथ्स कंप्लीट टू रीच एवरी नुक एंड कॉर्नर ऑफ आर वेस्टर्न बॉर्डर एंड पार्टिसिपेट इन मेनी फंक्शन विच वर बींग ऑर्गेनाइज बाय द विलेजर्स it was very well received by the villagers and the participation of the family uh, uh, women women of the family and the uh, girls was uh, heartwarming it was a lifetime experience for me to motivate so many girls to join defense forces and a sense of satisfaction filled my heart when i used to hear from them ki mai bhi aapke jaisi banna chahti hu so that that was my lifetime experience i cannot forget and it was uh, uh, my experience which uh, has given me a lot of uh, self respect so <laughs> so this is how the armed forces they are contributing on various fronts like being safeguarding the borders and they are even engaging in the social campaigns like beti bachao beti padhao so this is uh, armed forces are giving so much to the nation actually now lieutenant nishu ma'am would you like to add any of your experience from your training or post commission on the lighter part um you know i had various examples that when we went for the first posting the first salute dsc jawan got so confused we were in short skirts white uniform madam sir jai hind so it was hilarious to see parade aapke direction ke liye taiyar hai shri maan is somebody checked him he said shrimati so it was a utter confusion humor in uniform we were so alert that we were told anybody walking anybody attending with the ceo or xo we have to salute and one day we were going and one of our colleague she said that daine they can salute and we realized that we actually saluted dog of exo so these were very very you know hilarious incidents but one incident which still brings smiles on my face uh, we were in uh, ins mandvi veram goa and uh, we were supposed to go for a camp which was 14 kilometers from our academy so we were supposed to walk and take a boat and go to the camp site and we had to rig our own tents so we were inexperienced but we reached there with great difficulty because drill boots were supposed to wear sport shoes we have to hang around our neck with the rucksack and while boating one two of our colleagues in the boat they slept the boat capsized so from there we managed to reach the camp they asked us to rig a tent but we could never make the tent stand on four legs so we actually slept with the tent fallen below and we were given one month to use for eating for drinking water and the night uh, squadron commander decided that we have to do a route march so i had a very loud voice they said you will make announcement and you will take the platoon to the nearby you know one forest was there so we went over confidently never realized what can happen to us and uh, one cadet was a great navigator but i don't know what happened to him we lost our way so whole night in that jungle we actually were hanging on a tree with a torch praying to god that when tomorrow morning the sun will rise next day when the sunrise so we saw the camp was just less than a 1 km away then 2 hours we were only doing duck walking up hill so this was the most interesting experience but we learned that never be over confident and always be ready for any situation so that's what i wanted to add on ma'am i hope the serial called madam sir it was must have been inspired by the experiences of women officers only <laughs> so great to hear that uh as the saying goes once a soldier always a soldier we are really proud of our veterans who during their military training acquired versatile skills and even after leaving the forces they are successfully handling their second innings and contributing to the nation's growth captain madhvi subramanyam got commissioned in indian navy in august 1995 she was awarded the most admired and inspiring indian in 2020 by indian ex defense service employee chamber of commerce and industries uh, commander madhvi
Ma'am, you're mute. Yeah. 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 Hi. So um, I guess you want me to share an experience. Like my colleague said, uh, there's so many experiences. There's so much to talk about. But yeah, I'd like to share uh, one experience of uh, being a small part of 2611 operations uh, during Mumbai attacks. Mm -hmm. um we all saw the command uh, the commandos getting winched down onto the terrace so i'd like to take you uh, behind the scenes one uh, night prior i was in the atc tower the commandos were all on the tarmac we were all waiting for the daybreak to launch that helicopter so i just uh, happened to uh, go i was uh, interacting with those um, commandos and i was the only thing that i could see on their faces was a glint you know there was shine they were just charged up to go uh, to that mission and come to think of it what was waiting for them we didn't even know how many enemies were there we didn't even know what kind of weapons we didn't even know when the helicopter goes and hovers over that terrace whether these guys would make it alive on to that terrace and as i was speaking to them i didn't even know how many of them i would see alive that evening you know and we talk about stress in our regular life in the external world so talking to them i i thought here uh, you know this is a living example and they were after the uh, uh, after that uh, mission soon after that mission they just boarded the bus and went to taj because taj was still under attack so that was something you know no no trace of stress no iota of fear on their uh, faces so that i realized that they being in uniform as well you know that stress is something that is so external to us if your mind body and soul are in alignment there is no stress um, if i have to put it in simpler terms if you do what you ought to do and you're well prepared for it and your conscience is clear there's no stress that that's great to hear ma'am that was really inspiring we would even like you to share with us like what kind of traits or skills you attained from the indian army that evolved your personality and it helped in your present career you are an international level yoga practitioner so we would like to hear from you lab like ma'am what traits army uh, navy has given you that is helping you in the second year for for me uh, this question is for me swati Yes, ma'am. This way. Okay. So one is yes. I'm completely like I said, and I was in air traffic control as well. So that is uh, again a lot of stories from that end as well. So I'm completely stress free. Like in corporate, I worked for ten years in corporate in uh, front end business development and sales. So my colleagues, even my clients, uh, they used to, uh, you know, uh, they say that I stress doesn't show on me. so my in fact one of my bosses commented you are like ms dhoni i said no i'm not ms dhoni i'm that soldier who's willing to go to the front unknowing you know not knowing what is there uh, you know uh, what is there uh, in the on the plate so that is one and secondly take life as it comes you yeah? take life as it comes just enjoy like uh, one of the colleagues were sharing whatever it is you are ready to go out you, you are prepared to go out and celebrate that day and something else the day throws up something else at you so just take everything in your stride and enjoy the camaraderie you know we all are social animals give each other the best you know, get best out of each other and just keep going nice learning lessons from the armed forces ma'am thank you so much for that uh, now i would like to ask captain anubha like you have around 30 years of experience in education and corporate training so please throw some light like how the army helped you with your second innings ma'am all right so before i joined army i was a trained teacher and uh, always dreaming to be in uniform i would say that my present personality is a gift from the army what i learned from the army well i'll tell you public speaking event planning and management handling human resource that is troop and subordinates training soft skills to families to children and to lady wives counseling mentoring so all these things which i applied to my second inning i am a, a certified trainer soft skills and behavior trainer i have uh, given counseling training to some of the students who are now in the army and in the uh, forces 
so that is what army has given me my complete personality you know when you are just very new to the army just passed out and you are told that okay you are food member and tomorrow is a you know there is a get together in the mess and 70 people are there and you have to handle you don't even know what you're supposed to do but then you learn so it is hands on experience which army gives you and a lot of faith is put in you that okay you can do it you are just told and you can do it so that kind of you know confidence the army has given me which has really helped me into getting my second inning third inning or whatever inning you say but it has become a part of your life your personality so i'm really thankful to army for what i am today it is because of the army True, ma'am. We all agree with you. The leadership qualities and the uh, adventurous spirit that the defence forces they develop is actually contributing to the nation. Uh, now we have Lieutenant Colonel Aditi Sharma, commissioned in March 2005, served 12 years in Indian Army, now well established in the corporate world. She was awarded the title Safety uh, Role Model for Leading Teams. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Aditi. what fraud blocks did you experience uh, during your post retirement phase mati thank you for the question and uh, thanks for uh, bringing me here to this platform so uh, as anubha ma'am uh, very rightly said you know that we uh, get hands on experience on various aspects and uh, you know when we leave uh, army say after 5 10 or somewhere between 10 to 14 years since all of us were short service commissioned officers and uh, we left the organization and we had no pension benefits also so when we go out and try to explore um, you know career opportunities outside and only to find that there are no options of any lateral hiring maybe in the government jobs or civil administrative jobs or even in the corporate world you know uh, the outside world really holds you in high regard you know whenever they uh, get to know or they see your profile okay you've served in the army oh, that's really great but they really don't know how to employ us effectively you know as most of my seniors very rightly said that we've been handling uh, hr we've been handling events we've been uh, you know doing various csr activities in the organization but i maybe say for example i am handling uh, i'm the adjutant and i'm handling the security issues of a battalion but you know if the corporate has to hire me say for a security profile they have, will have their own doubts whether a female would be able to handle it or not so you know the awareness still has to come and uh, as uh, everyone you know like the army also it was a transient phase for everyone even our instructors our ustads in the academy you know they uh, they went through a transition phase that how they have to deal with us similarly i feel the entire world the corporate world the various organizations the industries they still have to explore that what benefit we can bring to the table and how they can effectively employ us so i think more and more such sessions would be really effective for helping all of us find our uh, the best of the second innings thank you so ma'am there are indeed stereotypes in uh, about the role of defense officers in the corporate offices so because army officers armed officers we all are trained to be multitaskers so corporate perspective it needs to change in future definitely uh, now coming to commander ruby who joined as deputy advocate general in the punjab government and is uh, presently she even served as editor of the legal newspaper ma'am is still serving so uh, commander ruby we need to understand that what were the road blocks you faced in your transition phase from navy to the civil world uh, swati i'm still the editor of the legal newsletter of the is academy in masuri labasna so <laughs> i think yes. you got that bit so i'm still yes. learning that okay so as regards the road blocks uh, for women post retirement Uh, for the first uh, naval women officer batch the short service commission was only 7 years extendable up to 10 years out of the 22 women who joined almost everyone left by the end of 7 or 10 years and only 5 of us soldiered on in the hopes of permanent commission because our services were being extended piecemeal one year at a time and abruptly after 14 years no more extensions were granted 
uh, we were from the first batch and uh, we had all the expectations of a permanent uh, commission as our as our advertisement specifically stated that policy for permanent commission will be taken out in the seventh year of our service but unfortunately such policy never materialized so when the pc didn't come we found that due to these extensions piecemeal one year after one year of one year leading up to 14 years we had become overage for civil services and other government jobs because we had overshot the age relaxation given for the seven which was actually primarily meant for the seven years or 10 years of short service commission it appears that apparently no one in the policy making had you know uh, given thought to this for us so um, i think this was the biggest roadblock for us it was a very big disappointment in my case i was fortunate that i immediately joined as deputy advocate general for the office of the advocate general of punjab and where there is no such age limit and um, i served for a total of 6 years with one year in the punjab and haryana high court and 6 years in the supreme court but i think this was one point where one felt very let down and we thought that the policy makers should have at least having extended our services piecemeal 1 plus 1 plus 1 up to 14 extended the age relaxation also for us to appear for the civil services that's about it thank you for that ma'am now we have squadron leader uh, deepa nelwal uh, ma'am possesses multi industry experience such as in the development sector education and media industry and you have given exemplary performance and have 31 years of professional experience so when you decided to transform from defense to the corporate world what kind of hindrances you found in your way squadron leader deepa yes yeah, swati it was uh, it was quite a challenging time when i decided to quit air force and uh, like uh, some of my friends have already spoken i think not giving the women officers a uh, permanent commission uh, for very very long has been a big loss for the defense forces and uh, even for the corporate i feel they seem to have a very closed mindset the corporate my last 20 years now have been spent with the corporate tells me that it is very rigidly divided into industry types and functions and when they are hiring people they look for uh, people with relevant experience and for them relevant experience means you are coming from x type of industry or x function and function for them is hr finance and xyz and they really struggle to understand that an education branch officer uh, in the defense forces is doing nothing but human resource management at a huge scale indian air force had 1 lakh 20000 uh, people and when i was at fro subrato park we were managing careers of these 1 lakh 20000 uh, people but i think for corporate uh, because of that closed mindset or maybe maybe that closed mindset is because uh they don't have enough exposure or understanding of uh, what is it that defense officers do that's one and uh, because of that they really initially were hesitant uh, and uh, so almost 9 months i was looking uh, for an opportunity and i would be told by the placement consultant that you don't have the relevant experience so finally i had to request them forget don't get me a job just get me a meeting and uh, that's when some meetings happened and after 9 months of struggle in one month i had eight meetings and after every meeting i had a offer letter in hand so it's not only me all my uh, batchmates who uh, you know i know went to different corporates they've been doing extremely well uh, so i think the civil world needs to understand that it is competencies uh, as a leaders that matter and not the function Uh, uh knowledge which can be acquired industry and function knowledge can be acquired in a couple of months so i'm hoping conversations like these uh, will add to uh, a wider exposure for the civil world and uh, better utilization of the competencies of defense professionals in general especially women officers so yes we just witnessed the roadblocks that uh, the veterans faced while in the uh, they were trying to trans uh, from from their uh, armed forces background to the civil thing now we even need to understand that what are the challenges that are being faced 
by the permanent commissioned officers presently serving in the forces uh, we would like to call upon uh, lieutenant colonel anuradha sharma who has 22 years of experience as an education officer in the indian army she has served in army public schools in india and worked as a training trainer in ima dehradun ota chennai and many renowned institutions so we have lieutenant colonel dr anuradha sharma thank you swati for the question everything is challenging and everything evolves you cannot say that what is there in the person yesterday he is the same person tomorrow or it is same for the organization also we are evolving every day every year and so is the army or the defense forces some of the challenges which i have found which are being faced by the women officers are initially uh, gender discrimination which is main and the stereotypes that women are often seen as unfit or unsuitable because of the physical emotional or social roles they have to prove themselves that is the most sore point that they have to prove each time to their male counterparts to gain respect and recognition why should we if we are doing our job wholeheartedly performing to the best of the capabilities to the best of the situation then why each time it is a test taken by us second thing is the mindset the indian mindset as told by one of the co uh, colleagues the traditional belief that combat roles are only made for men do we forget rani jhansi rani lakshmi bai rani chennamma ahilya bai and so many others even captain lakshmi segal of ina that is dates back to history but today in this scenario in these defense forces can we remember colonel mitali madhumita sena medal who got the gallantry the first gallantry award in afghanistan kabul she was one the only chosen one who went there who performed and who showcased her bravery she was awarded the gallantry sena medal the first women officer unless and until then opportunity is being provided you cannot test that yes what women can do but i think this mindset is changing the third thing which i found is the skewed gender ratio in the cantonments in the air force stations we used to find just one lady officer in the entire station not two but in last 30 years i think this scenario is changing people are recognizing there are numbers are growing and i think the army is also growing at personal level sometimes i feel ki yes there is a problem when we are in our mother's role the pregnancy issues the leave which is there but yes women are most capable to handle the stress and it has been scientifically proven also that women can handle stress better than men so what more is required it is the skill but the skill can be mastered it has to be practiced it has to be rehearsed and it can be mastered we are also told that you are not groomed to command you are not groomed for operational but that is training once we have to be given the opportunity and then we have to be trained for that definitely in the years to come i feel that women will prove themselves equal to men in armed forces too thank you ma'am uh, so after listening to all of you when the quote comes to my mind like swami vivekanand quoted in a day when you don't come across any problems though you can be sure that you're traveling in the wrong path so after listening to all of you i'm sure with so many problems we are heading definitely to the right path so now the next question that comes to my mind is what has changed after three decades from the early 1990s when women entry started in the indian armed forces to the present times when the women have got permanent commission when uh, you got commissioned in army the initial batch of the pioneer officers you have definitely you were aware of the training and the avenues that were available at the time for lady officers 
Let us hear this from the recipient of the gold medal for standing first in the order of merit, Major Anjana. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Swati. Uh, as uh, just now, Anuradha had said that uh, opportunities needs to be given to women officers. I still remember when we got commission in the year ninety three. Our training was only there for six months. So our training was different from the uh, other gentlemen cadets, and our status was not very clear because gentlemen had uh, cadets had training for around ten months, and we had it for six months. So they were not considered our batchmates. So there was a huge fiasco and a, a, a status as to what is going to be our status as uh, Anupa, uh, Anupama had also also mentioned. So this was a major thing that we could not understand. Later on, these things were resolved. People started accepting, but the six months training carried on for about fifteen years in the army, until they decided army decided to merge the training of lady cadets along with gentlemen cadets in the year two thousand nine. So the training got merged, and then the uh, lady officers also got the number as SS officer, that is short service officers. And uh, uh, rightly said by Anuradha that once you are given an opportunity, we can prove our, ourselves. you will be surprised to know that in 2010 divya ajit kumar was the first lady officer to win the sword of honor so definitely if we are given an opportunity we can prove ourselves and now of course a permanent commission has been granted uh, to lady officers initial first and second batches did not even get commission i mean did not even get uh, uh, to serve beyond 10 years and uh, now they are considered even for the uh, selection grade full colonel and they are even being given commands and one more thing which i want to add on is that army has now opened avenues for the women officers to serve as pilots in the core of army aviation and not to forget that enrollment of women in other ranks has also been started in the core of military police right from the year 2090 so i would say army has come a long way and uh, definitely policies are getting improved measures are being taken and a lot of opportunities are being given to uh, lady officers and with the induction of girls in nda i think uh, the day is not far off when you might see women officers even in uh, armored and infantry thank you Thank you so much, ma'am, for giving uh, the insight of the army side. Now I would like to ask it from the naval side, Lieutenant Nishu, ma'am. What changes are visible as per your understanding, ma'am? What has changed in the last three decades? Uh, adding to uh, previous point, I think navy was clearer from day one. Ninety two, our training was same with the cadets. So we had complete clarity, except the permanent commission part where they were vague. I think Navy has really come a long way. To give you some data of June 23, the numbers have really, really tripled now. If you look at today, we have 580 women officers, close to 1,000 sailors, and 540 medical officers who are working in Navy. So now they are given spouse co relocation, compassionate ground leave. Their maternity leave is clubbed with furlough leave and other leaves to give them that settlement period. they are being given on a gender neutral basis a lot of women i heard on a gender neutral basis they are given uh captain meera can you please uh, mute yourself thank you on a gender neutral basis they are given resettlement you know options also so that way navy has opened doors now there is a nda entry in ina they are joining btech courses in our time in 92 there were only three branches education logistics law but today we see atcs we see um, they are they are taking stream of rpa they are managing home helicopters on the warships and we have the first lady officer who is commanding the warship as well so on the ship also you know so the uh, lady officers are going so it's like opportunity given and uh, indian naval women officer in cashtet and we are happy the way progress has been made so there are huge paradigm shift i can see navy has made so ma'am there is a paradigm shift has been observed at various level 
so when we look back like from struggle to get even get a chance to serve the nation in uniform now the women officers they are commanding the units and the warships they are frontline fighter pilots so definitely things are evolving for something better uh, now we want to call upon captain meera dave commissioned in march 2006 she was honored by the president of india she was awarded the gold medal from goc in chief so captain meera presently you are associated with the youth and students from schools and colleges through your social activities and work so i would like to ask you that what are the present gateways available for the girls who are interested in joining the armed forces captain meera thank you so much captain swati for this very important question because uh, the answer to this question will help our youth to get the right direction to move ahead for uh, applying and entering into the armed forces as an officer so for the benefit of the audience i would like to divide this answer in two parts one is uh, before february 2020 and one is after february 2020 February 2020 marks a very important chapter in the history of women officers in the Indian Armed Forces, specifically Indian Army, because that is when the Supreme Court uh, gave a very historic judgment. Now, what happens before February 2020? As we are talking about the different entry levels uh, into the Indian Armed Forces uh, for officers, and that too for the women. so before february 2020 only graduation was the level that after completing graduation women were allowed to appear or even give uh, exams for uh, getting selected as officers in in an army and uh, once they appear for the uh, exams that is one is the cds exam combined defense service exam that is the exam which is conducted by upsc union public service commission and once they clear that they have to undergo ssb interview that is service selection board interview of 5 days of rigorous process after which they have a thorough examination of medical and when they get into the merit list they undergo 11 months of rigorous training in officers training academy chennai so that was the only academy and only entry for the women now comes uh, the uh, part of what happened before february 2020 that they were not granted permanent commission and they were only given a short service commission what i mean by permanent commission here is that a pensionable service that is you are you are allowed to serve for 20 years and that is how you can get pension but women officers were allowed to serve only for 14 years in different service brackets of 5 plus 5 plus 4 or 10 plus 4 now when the historic decision of february 2020 comes when honorable supreme court grants permanent commission to the indian army women officers what changes is one of course that now they are granted a permanent commission that is a pensionable service they are allowed to serve for 20 years the entry levels have really grown um at very different levels so now which was only graduation before now the girls who are in 6th standard who are in 9th standard can apply for sainik school they can also apply for rashtriya military school rms when in 9th standard a very important entry has been open of rimc that is uh, rashtriya indian military college that is once you are in 8th standard you can apply for the exams and the third level of entry is after 12th standard in national defense academy kadakwasla pune but mind you for the audience that all of these exams are horribly tough and you need to really work very very hard to pass all all of this uh, written examination and after that graduation already exists in officers training academy chennai so these are many avenues which have been open for all our girls uh, and women who want to apply to become uh, officers in indian army and uh, get one of the prestigious organization and serve for their life uh, which is which teaches you it's not a profession but it teaches you how to live so thank you so much for this question captain swati thank you so much captain meera for providing us the useful information now to add to this information let's call uh lieutenant commander payal commissioned in the indian navy in 2013 she was a member of the first indian military crew who circumnavigated the globe on ins tarni she was awarded the vice chief of naval staff uh, commendation the nosena medal that's gallantry and the national adventure award 
so payal as we know you got released from services recently so please tell us that what entries are available for the girls who want to join the navy over to you thank you very much uh, captain swati for the question so as you have rightly pointed out uh, captain meera that uh, all the avenues which are available for army for girls in army the same avenues are there for girls in navy in addition to that uh, so when i joined navy in 2013 after that the avenues for ocean sailing opened up for us in 2015 when for the first time uh navy asked us to volunteer for this adventure activity so almost 100 plus lady officers volunteered for it and out of which six of us got selected and uh, then we completed the uh, uh sailing and then we came back uh, to india got the uh, awards and recognitions but the process of getting into sailing and learning everything was really challenging but now uh, navy has been uh, training other two women officers for solo circumnavigation so more and more opportunities are opening up and also we are have now seen the recent news where women officer got uh, uh, as uh, got position as a commanding officer and uh, so it is uh, rising and i see that uh, now navy has opened up all the avenues for women officers and it is very great and i am proud to be a naval officer in that district thank you ma'am thank you ma'am true true pal so as you apprised us about the new entries that's available for the girls what changes do you anticipate uh, in an organization's ethos and culture in the wake of induction of girls into the sanic schools and feeder institutions of nda what what are your views about this pal So, ma'am, uh, as I was posted in Rashtra Indian Military College, uh, f- uh, like three years back, so um, at that point of time, when Supreme Court has given this order of uh, getting girls inducted into these schools and feeder institution for NDA, uh, there was a huge, uh, I would say, stir in these organization because they were not ready for it. So. Uh, Uh, since i was the only women officers at that point of time in rmc i was given a uh, charge to look after the girls and to make the policies to help uh, educating boys uh, physically and uh, emotionally how to handle this change because they have only seen the space where they are with their uh, counterparts and now they have to adjust with the girl cadets so and uh, getting the new infrastructure because uh, if you see uh, it's a all boys school so you don't have uh, like it's a small example in a gto ground where they getting trained you have just a uh, washroom for boys there are no girls washroom so all the infrastructure has to come in and new teachers have to be given so these are small changes but as per uh, in the uh, in the indian navy i would say the ethos and organization would not change much but yes there will be small changes in policies there will be changes where few courses will be added like um, watch keeping certificate uh, was earlier not required because we were not commanding ships but now uh, it will be required further if we are commanding <coughs> submarines you will be required to train in that thing so it will be not very large scale changes uh, but a smaller change thank you ma'am so you were at the right place at the right time pile actually it's significant to sensitize the organization and its culture so that both men and women understand each other and work in harmony and <laughs> let me say that now coming to lieutenant colonel anuradha ma'am with 22 years of ser- service experience in providing training in the renowned defense institutions i would like to know from you like what changes do you foresee in the organizational culture with the new development thank you swati i was the administrative officer of rashtra military school where only boys were there today when the girls are going to join the sanic schools and rimc and all these institutes and when they have joined the nda also i feel it's a very welcome change a very positive change in my first previous answer i said ki army is also evolving we are changing every day so this i see as a very positive change because when they are studying together working together in this coed in the normal public school these children they are going to 
promote mutual respect the gender discrimination which we see will not be there they will be able to understand and encourage competition a healthy competition and since these institutions they are the feeder institutions for the defense uh, academies these girls and boys will be more motivated to join the armed forces the women who are aspiring to be the officers of army navy or air force this will bring a balanced perspective and a good positive work ethos in the years to come thank you so much for that ma'am now after listening to the life journey of the officers the challenges they faced and the skills that they acquired during the their tenure i would like to ask wing commander anupama to give her thoughts that how the concept of gender equality has been addressed in the armed forces so um, honestly speaking i think we have come a long long way from where we started in 1992 uh, from initial inception of 12 to we are 1200 or uh, more than 3 to 4 thousands if we have to include all the services um if that is a progressive step i feel um, it has taken on the other side i would say it has taken a long time because it's been 3 decades now so this should have come much earlier nevertheless let's celebrate that it has come there i durust i as they say but we have reached some place now so um, we all uh, technically speaking are a reflection of the society and as we look um, at the world outside and we realize that yes uh you know there has been such a change in society the women are accepted in all fields you know you have disc jockey to you know the pilots of the airlines which have been there for a long but it is at a larger number there are uh, every avenue in the world is been explored by women so and if they have been accepted but i still feel there is a binary as far as the military is concerned so there is a section of people who feel that yes um, they are acceptable but yes there is a large number of people who are still unaware um, you'll be surprised that i met somebody who's pretty educated um, i met them at the airport and i was having a conversation and when i said that i was in the military uh, i was in the air force they said what uh, you were in air hostess i said mm, i was in the air force so this is air force as in the military air force i said yes where is the doubt in your mind and this is i'm talking about like just 2 years back so after 28 years since the women had joined people did not know there has been lot of um, uh, you, you know uh, the fact that uh, 26 january pe they are being showcased the nari shakti has come in so it has come uh, in the minds of people people are kind of watching there have been uh, the women inducted in the fighter stream of air force um, was splashed all over the media so i think that did a very good thing about people realizing that yes women are there in military but uh, if we were to talk to talk about gender equality i feel we have reached quite a mile but still there is few steps ahead to go well said ma'am we are the reflections of our society and changes are taking place for sure like the use of gender neutral terminology is being promoted even in the armed forces so yes it's a truly a uh, welcoming step uh, now we have uh, lieutenant commander divya jyot she joined navy in 2011 she was awarded commendation performance excellence by commanding in chief she was a member of the editorial board of official war histories so uh divya jyot you recently uh, got released from the navy i would like to ask you that what is your viewpoint about the gender equality in the armed forces thanks a lot for the question ma'am a very good evening to everyone i'd like to say that there are two aspects for ensuring gender equality in the services the first is offering uh, equal opportunities to both the genders like in my 11 years of service i was carrying out the same charter of duties as my male counterparts in fact i was uh, officiating as the officer in charge of the naval history division at the headquarters of the navy i was carrying out you know similar duties whether it was night duties or leading my sailors as their divisional officer so there was no any no such difference in the charter of duties the only difference in the navy came uh, to the fact that women officers were not appointed on board ships while i was serving but uh, 
as a happy stance uh, that has also changed now we have a woman officer who has been appointed to command a ship just on the navy day that went by and uh, navy has recruited around 1000 uh, women sailors under the agnivir scheme so these are very very positive steps the second aspect for ensuring gender equality is creating a congenial atmosphere where the community is ready to see women in these lead roles you know for this uh, gender sensitization measures are taken to remove any biases which you know someone could be having just because of their uh, conservative background or you know as ma'am said uh, the uh, forge is also a reflection of the society so uh, i would just like to conclude by saying that uh, there is a lot of gender equality in the forge as per uh, my experience and uh, all the veteran officers over here but something that we need to ponder over as a society is that we always talk about women empowerment but what are we doing to prepare the indian society to embrace these empowered women right so i'll leave you at that thought thanks a lot so very relevant question for the audience like what are we doing as a society to embrace the empowered women you all want a women empowerment but as a society are we ready for the same so it's a, a thought a thought provoking concept for our society let the audience uh, let's see what they feel about it so coming to when we wear the uniforms we always felt the pride that whenever we were addressed as veterans at any place we always had the pride that we have served in our nation uh, but what do our families feel about it so uh, let me come to major suman commissioned in march 2001 was awarded instructor grading at the college of military engineering pune and she has won the gold medal in the cross country championship uh, what do you feel major suman that donning the uniform has somewhere affected the mindset of your family kids or society in general major suman you are mute uh Major Suman, can you please unmute? Thank you. We would like to request you to start uh, again. Apologies, <laughs> absolutely, Swati. Both of us have come a long way from olive greens to khaki, and uh, I think my wearing a uniform had a substantially visible impact, made by my own family, friends, or society. uh i hail from seeker which is a well known town in uh, rajasthan especially it links with armed forces you will find uh, from each and every family there is a male in armed forces there in spite of that when i was selected and i start decided to join lots of eyebrows raised and lots of advices keep flowing into my parents actually but my parents they supported me and uh, here am i and if i see uh, yes donning the uniform uh, even in uh, my present scenario whenever since i am wearing a khaki uh, uniform but still whenever in the meetings we are being introduced to the senior officers from civil services when they know our background that we have come from army it certainly uh, changes their mindset towards us completely and we are taken more seriously and uh, i can proudly add on here also that uh, i have motivated quite a few uh, children to uh, join the uh, armed forces including my own son uh, my son he decided at a very tender age seeing me and my husband wearing the uniform to join the armed forces and he is presently getting trained in indian naval academy uh, i always lived strongly uh and always felt that equality is not a phenomena dictated by the outside world but a feeling within and share equal responsibilities and the hardship as well so i uh, basically conclude here that well behaved women seldom make history those who break the glass ceiling pave the way for themselves and makes better future so ma'am thank you so much and it's amazing that you have been the role model for your son who's following the footsteps of his parents so moreover yes i agree that uh, the feeling uh, that when you address as veterans you can't describe it in words it's something extraordinary uh, now coming to squadron leader deepa she was awarded the air Fo- uh, air officer commanding in chief medal so ma'am would you like to share how you wearing the uniform influenced the society in general by your family so me uh, wearing uniform let me start with my home my daughter 
I think she is extremely proud of the fact that her mother was an Air Force officer. So everybody she meets. So when I go and visit her school for PTM, everyone, all her teachers know that uh, I'm an uh, ex Air Force officer because uh, they tell me that she's been proudly talking about it, and all her friends. So so I think the fact that she's very proud and she's certainly considering Air Force as a future career option. Uh, so. that that makes me feel that in many ways she is motivated by my career but other than my daughter i feel everyone i have met post my air force days so i served air force for 11 years one year training so 12 years and post that i have worked for 20 years in corporate world but today also when i introduce myself uh, it is my air force career that everyone is keen to know more about uh, like uh, some of our friends said so yes uh, the fact that women are wearing uniform has impacted society the numbers some of my colleagues just now shared from you know when we started first batch of indian air force uh, 12 girls and today we have thousands who are in the forces however i really really wish if 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 this journey would have been shorter so it has taken uh, uh, the services 30 years to give permanent commission to uh, women officers and you know when i was taught you know teaching history to my daughter that till 100 years back women were not allowed to enter schools women were not getting educated and look in 100 years what has happened women are part of every possible profession today and doing extremely well so when we had joined we were told in next 5 6 years you will be given permanent commission if you do well and had that happened at that point of time and the number of women was significantly increased imagine what could have happened in these 30 years uh, but anyway finally it has happened so i am hoping now the pace will be more faster the numbers will be larger whether it in nda or any other uh, entry uh, uh, system within the three service so that the impact on the society can be much higher than what it is right now so that's what i feel thank you you ma'am and you all have been motivational figures for the past generation and will be for the upcoming ones so today we have women officers from tri services and looking at their incredible successful stories we want some advice from them like uh, commander madhvi she is apart from being a veteran you have been an international gold medalist in yoga as you already shared with us the uh, experience you had during the time of taj and sinus what you shared with us ma'am i would like to hear any message that you want to give for the future generation we would like to hear from you yeah especially i think uh, for joining armed forces Uh, you know when i speak to lot of people i keep uh, meeting uh, students across you know to different schools and i do advise on career in armed forces so uh, unfortunately i feel the media speaks mostly about soldiers death you know the media highlights soldiers death more than the soldiers life so there is so much to soldiers life so i keep telling them you know you got to meet a soldier to understand soldiers life so couple of th- many things many things swati but just to highlight two or three things number one leadership to its core you know on your one command people are willing to lay down their lives their most precious asset what can be more precious than life for a human being so that is a kind of leadership that is taught in the forces and where else you uh, you'll be taught this kind of uh, skill or you know behavioral trait if you may call even most premium uh, management institutes teach you management just about economics and money so that is number one and on the lighter note it's it's a practical course on entrepreneurship you know wherein you have limited resources and you really motivate people to give their best heart and soul that is number one number two uh you are keeping yourself fit how many organizations vouch for your fitness or uh, encourage you to keep yourself fit you know wherever you are working you spend a bit of your mind you know your psychology your uh, your mental peace your physical fitness you know you spend from these resources to achieve what you want to achieve but here is an organization that not only encourages you to keep yourself fit give you it gives you time resources and it also tests you peri- periodically whether you are fit or not so that is number 2 and number 3 your profession and passion they go hand in hand today if somebody wants to do say hiking or you know mountaineering or para jumping you have to firstly take leave you have to spend from your resources you have to see where you can get that kind of training 
but here is the organization that gives you everything you know you get the best of professional guidance and you still keep getting your pay you don't need to take your leave you can be a pilot and still go and climb mount everest you know you can be a logistics officer and still go on cruise to antarctica um, you can be a technical officer and still do a para jumping so you profession and passion go hand in hand and in fact the organization actually encourages you because it's a life fully lived the organization encourages you to really stretch your boundaries and see what else you can do other than just your profession so many many reasons to join forces but i would say this is a life worth dying for so boys and girls if if you are listening go for it thank you so much ma'am for the motivation it's a truly a motivating factor for all of us now i would like to ask lieutenant colonel aditi a few words from your side for the young people listening here thank you swati so to all the young boys and girls who are listening and attending this session so i'm sure you must have listened to madhavi ma'am and uh, she has really given you useful tips as to why you should join the armed forces how we are much better much much better than any other profession of the world right so uh, no one really pays you to be fit no one really pays you to go for adventure activities no one really pays you you know to be um, stress free and uh, mentally you um, know be ready uh, for everything so these are some of the traits that you will only get in the armed forces and uh, as um, uh, meera ma'am also said now there are a number of entries that have opened up and you really have to prepare very very well for the exams you know generally what we see that uh, in the schools the 11th and 12th year uh, the students who are studying in their 11th and the 12th year you know they are very serious about preparing for medical exams or clearing the iit so similar seriousness and josh should be there in uh, this generation you know to clear the nda as well or whichever channel you choose to join the armed forces so it is all about the josh it is absolutely not about the muscle power the strength lies in your mind so you have to believe in yourself you know if you really want to live this way of life you have to believe in yourself and if you think you can you will surely do it and uh, that is why you know in all the hoardings and advertisements even after so many years the question still remains the same do you have it in you so prove your metal prove your worth so looking forward to meet more and more young boys and girls joining the armed forces thank you thank you so much uh, fn colonel aditi now we have already witnessed on this platform where women officers from tri services they have shared their life journeys the challenges they faced how they overcame those challenges and the traits they acquired from the forces which is helping them to lead the second inning but still we need to understand that how such learnings could be utilized to provide better opportunities to the officers after they hang their uniforms we would like to hear the viewpoint of major ankita and wing commander anupama what suggestions do you have to establish a future road map for the women officers to provide them better opportunities in the outside world major ankita okay so basically when we have heard about all the lady officers life story and now this platform has given a window to the civilians to understand what life we have led i would like to add a small challenge a very small challenge that i faced being the first lady officer to be posted in the ci ops i had a very simple and a small challenge those days that was reaching office alive and reaching back home alive that's it that was a very small challenge every day for 2 years in the ci ops area and now with that fact coming out when uh, in the lateral entry when we see where after we hang our military boots what is there for us in the civil definitely there has to be some kind of a lateral entry for women officers why why i am saying women officers should be encouraged to have these lateral entries because women officers are extremely great managers extremely they have been managing their social life their personal life their office life 
with full responsibility without shirking their responsibility anywhere we have not given excuses during our uh, i mean i served for 14 years not even for once even somebody is sick or not sick or we have not made any excuses in our life and then we when we go out when i came out from the indian army we were in the peak of recession of recession there was no job for me in 2008 and the as right now i am state bank of india when i went there i was the first girl to join in the security uh, fraternity in uh, new delhi now even that when i was climbing up the ladder in the security fraternity there were doubts whether the women officers can be promoted whether they'll be able to handle the senior position and today with great pride i tell this forum that i'm the first and the only uh, assistant general manager security in state bank of india pan india why because i could prove my worth while at work and i could take care of my family uh, responsibilities as well so i will uh, want some kind of a lateral entry for women officers in uh, un jobs in psus in uh, central uh, government or even in state government that is going to help a lot thank you thank you so much ma'am for that now coming to wing commander anupama thank you so much swati so um, i'll just have a, a bit of a different take on uh, uh, this uh, there are a few things i would like to say to the audience not to my colleagues here because they lived through it um i feel um, a bit of a respect which um, is lacking in the civil world uh, that's that's an observation personally and uh, it's a shared observation from large number of people whom i happen to know and it's not nothing to do with gender per se but about military so um, i think um, road ahead should be that people the world in the civil world must respect the kind of life um, the dedication with the way the people have lived uh, in the armed forces you've heard their experiences you've heard um, women speak at the moment you've heard that they wanted to live um, you know the challenges were to just kind of live um, so they they were standing there at the post while you were sleeping at home so um, when we step out of uh, our you know uniform and when we are facing the civil world i think um, yes there is a respect but i feel there are places where the respect is still not um, you know granted to the uh, military people specifically in our country at this moment it is it comes the flavor comes only when there is um, there is a terror attack there is some insurgency happens and suddenly there is a hula bula about you know the military people rest of the days i feel uh, it's uh, sad to say that um, they are forgotten they are put on the side um, you you know you if you um, i remember there was an incident during the note bandi time one of the person had said that you know he had to stand in long queues and he said that i've been posted as yachin and they didn't give a damn about it um, you know uh, so these kind of stories um, um, for the positive of time just narrating one but these kind of things really break your heart when uh, you hear that people are not respected the second uh, aspect i would feel when we are talking about vacancy like in civil services you have there are no marked vacancy for women or men there is a vacancy in civil service roster everybody appears whoever makes it makes it i think that's the time that it's high time we do the same so if let's say the army navy or the air force has like 100 vacancy in a year they just open it and um, lo and behold if um, 100 were to be all women toppers let them be if they're 50 40 2 1 whatever it may be so the vacancy should be open and it should be irrespective of gender it should be just on the basis of merit the entry should happen um, when we talk about um, hardship uh, civil services and most of the services we see that even they called um, you know place like guwahati is in a hardship for them what about siachen you girls have um, uh, ankita was just mentioning about uh, being in counter insurgency place um, that has never been um, you know talked about um, there are allowances which are given to in in civil services for um, postings which are like very cushy as far as the military is concerned not as compared to what military would go through so i think um, we deserve better uh we've come a long way but i think we need to uh, be aware we have to keep our eyes and ears open and watch the world thank you jai hind jai hind thank you so much ma'am 
now karen it's the end of the speaker session uh, we have come to the end of this session and here i extend my heartfelt gratitude to all the remarkable women soldiers who graced this evening with their gracious presence our life journey your life journey is not only signify the strength but also symbolizes the resilience of women in uniform i am of the opinion that today our coming together here is not just a mere coincidence but a significant moment in a collective journey thank you for contributing for the richness of this moment and being instrumental in shaping the beginning of what promises to be an exciting and collaborative journey ahead and thank you once again for your unwavering commitment to duty and for being an inspiration to many i again want to thank the rise summit 2024 and karon is here so i would like to hear from her this is the final word thanks thank you all of you thanks swati no i'm not going to have the final word because this is just too great for me to do that i still want to give back the final word back to these amazing ladies who absolutely inspirational i want to ask just one question if i may have the luxury to do that is that what would you all like to see as an action coming out of this you know i hope that this is a starting of something really you know unique because as you said just coming together is is a big thing right uh, and you know they always say that uh, coming together is a is a process uh, staying together you know is is obviously progress but doing something together is success so i think you know we have made uh, the process is complete and swati is of course the one who's architected that process uh, the uh, progress is seen by this wonderful uh, round table that we've had now what is that success that we can possibly look at uh, i i know um, you know we've already kind of gone long so i'm not going to keep you all and it's late in the night I'm not going to keep you all much more but what i would request you know really from my heart is that can you all think of one action point perhaps that we can take as an outcome from this conversation and say can we do this together you know and especially for the last two points that came up in terms of what do we expect from society when when uh, you know uh, you come out of service right and i have been fortunate enough to have a few friends including swati who have been part of the service and i know the amazing life that they're leading but i can also imagine now and i feel bad because now i realize oh my gosh i never ever asked them how difficult it was or what it was like i just assumed that you know that everybody feels the same way and you know feels so much of gratitude and therefore they would give uh, when you said that that someone having served in siachen could not even move up the line i almost cringed literally like really you know like that so i if that is the case then what is it that we can do to change so i'm going to leave you all with that thought and i'm going to hope that swati is going to be my co traveler in this and uh, you know we will call it a day because or other i think we should say we will call it a night <laughs> yeah and thank you once again everyone i know a lot of effort has gone in putting this uh, you know round table together and it was phenomenal thank you very much i think we really need to give a round of applause and i can't stop clapping for you all for you thank you very much once again thank good you. night and to all jai our hind. participants and viewers jai hind jai hind thank you so much jai hind